Hey guys, I had a quick video here on some simple 2D line art animation. For the past month, I've been helping my partner Beck produce a, uh, a summary video for Robin Hobb. Robin Hobb's a great fantasy author, she's written heaps of books. And for this particular summary, I wanted to do something fun and interesting. I wanted to make some small, funny 2D animations whenever Beck was going over the summary of each of her series, just to keep it really like visually interesting. And the animation method that I used for this was super simple. I just used uh, Adobe Illustrator, Premiere Pro, and sometimes Photoshop. And I just want to show you my method really quickly because you can just get these really cool, interesting results with a very simple method. So let's just jump straight into it. So let's look at one of the animations I did really quickly. I'd use Premiere to assemble all of my line art. So if I was to jump in here, you can see all these layers that I used. It was simply just a matter of drawing a picture, importing it in, and then uh, assembling it. And the assembly is what created the animation. It's super, super simple. So at the bottom here, I've got my crinkle paper, and that is the base layer. So all the animation up here, all this line art is just happening on top of this crinkle paper. And I really like the effect that it gives. And to get that crinkle paper, it was literally just a matter of, I, uh, I, I found some paper that I liked. You know, it's got some really nice texture. It's a good color. Uh, I, I scrunched it up. And then I flattened it out and I scanned it and voila, that's what I got. Or you can just use your phone to take a picture of it, like that works as well. So looking here in Premiere, you can see uh, th there's a few things happening here. So first of all, I got my 1920 by 1080 canvas here and I'm animating in uh, 24 frames per second. That doesn't really matter though because the animation will be as quick as you make it by assembling these pictures next to one another. So this is all a matter of uh, layering. So on the bottom layer here, I've got my crinkle paper. Part one is the dragon extras. That's these guys over here. So as we pan across, that's just these guys in the water here and walking on the bank. So they don't change that much. I think I've only got three frames for them. This is frame one down here. Frame two is this dragon guy. He's just looking across. Yeah, he's looking across at the boat. Then frame three is, you probably can't even see it here, but he's just like smiling. Yeah, a little smile. Uh, and it, it's literally anything that's getting animated has its own layer and it gets animated that way. So above that, we've got the main dragon. That's this guy over here. And uh, we've got this first frame of him where he's thinking, he's looking left, he's looking back. The whole point of this is that he doesn't know which way to go. Uh, he's scratching his chin. That's literally just a matter of going between those two drawings. He's going back and forth. And then uh, finally, you know, he looks around that way. Once again, just all simple assembly. And up here, we've got the question marks. And those just go above his head. And that's literally two different drawings of question marks next to one another. One, two, one, two, one, two. Simple. So you can see all these elements are actually all together in one picture because that's just getting animated straight across. There's no need for them to all be individual. It's all just one big sweep across to kind of introduce the scene. But when it comes to rest, that's when all those single elements are being introduced and the animation's happening. This is the background right here. So there's no need for that to be animated. It's just a constant thing. Then we've got the ship coming in. So that's this guy here. This ship is just a layer like that. What I've done is I've bought my line art into Photoshop. So I've bought that into Photoshop, that line art. I got my crinkle paper, which is this guy here. That's my scan. And what I've done was, Control all, I'm gonna select it all. Control C to control copy it. Uh, and then I'm just pasting that in. Uh, I've got my line art there. And then with my line art selected, press W, get my magic wand tool. Select out here, select any areas where I wanna delete that paper. There too. Uh, and then I'm gonna click on the actual paper layer, press delete. Press Control D to deselect and voila, I've got this right here. So then when I press show on both of these layers, I've, I've got my, my line art right here. If I was to press off of it, you know, that's just the paper cut out. But I got my line art and my paper fill. And then it's a matter of, you know, file, save as, and then you'd save that as a uh, PNG, name it properly. And there it is, it's got its own alpha layer with a PNG. And there you have it, you have your own asset. It's got its own layers.
when you bring it into Premiere Pro, it's just gonna slide on top of that other paper liner. So you don't have to worry about the background, it's just gonna go over that nicely. And I did the same thing for the sailor here. All I did for him was the exact same thing. Come here, I've got his, that's the line art. And then I've got the fill. And you just do that for each frame of animation. But David, I hear you ask, how did you get this line art? Well, let me show you. First, you open up Illustrator. I love using Illustrator. Now, I could have done this animation in a program that's actually made for animation, like uh, Adobe Animate. And I use that program to animate Beck's BookTube intro. It's good, but I really, really like the brush tool in Adobe Illustrator. Any other program that I've used, the brush tool just doesn't come close. I love the way that you can draw something and then manipulate the line afterwards. You can get the points of curves and like just grab them and do this and that and everything. I, I really, <laughs> I really like the brush tool in Illustrator. And so what I do is I just open up a 1920 by 1080 canvas. My workspace was in the painting workspace. So, you know, it's just the 1080, HD 1080 canvas that I used. When I open up, you might have some of these weird uh, green lines. To get rid of them, it's just going to window, artboards, click on artboard one, double click on this part here, and then untick these guys. Okay, they're gone, get rid of that. And to get rid of these numbers up here, it's just a matter of going to view, rulers, uh, hide video rulers, done. Great, cool. So for your first layer, what I like to do is just go to it, simple shape. I'm just gonna pull that across to the size of 1920 by 1080 canvas, roughly, it doesn't have to be exactly spot on, but that's just my white canvas. So when I'm drawing my line art, I can bring this up and see what I'm actually drawing. I lock that off and all the layers above are where I do my line art. Now, Illustrator is great with a stylus. It uses uh, pressure sensitivity really well, uh, but you have to make your brush first. To do that, you just go create new calligraphic brush, okay. Then we change all of these to pressure, two, three, all pressure. I like to put my variation at about seven or so PT. And if you look at the middle, uh, that's like if you put on a, an average amount of pressure, that's what's gonna look like. Put down a lot of pressure, it'll get about yay big, a little bit of pressure, about that big. So we just press okay. Now we've got our calligraphic brush that uses pressure sensitivity. So if I press B and I start drawing, I can get a lot of pressure. I'm pressing down hard, then I'm pressing down lightly, and then hard and light, and cool, that works. Pressing V, select all. Delete, great. And uh, here's another useful tip. Uh, so if you're drawing and you kind of like what you've drawn, but you just want to make some small adjustments, press A, and that's just this guy here. That's your direct selection tool. Uh, click on the point, the curvature point that you want to change, and you can just select that individual point and then just change that like that. And you can also use the arrow keys to kind of do some fine work like that. Cool. So everything's set up now, and it was just a matter now of literally, it's a, it's a simple matter of drawing every frame or every element that needs to be animated. So to start off with, of course, I would just draw the background. So here we go, I've got my canvas at the bottom here. Here is my Rain Wild Chronicles uh, scene. And these are all the frames that I use to animate that one particular scene. So if we look at this, a very simple animation just for this part one here and these are all the layers that are happening in that animation so first of all got our background that's everything there then we have our dragon extras which are these guys so we've got one so we've got one two three layers of those so that's because they get animated three times and that's pretty much only this guy so first frame is him walking Second frame, looking around. Third frame's a bit of a smile, yeah. Then we got the main dragon. So we got dragon one, where he's looking left, looking right. Uh, right, what's happening there is his little paws is going back and forth because he's scratching his chin. The whole point of this is his thinking. Then we got looking right and then smiling because the sailor's giving him directions. 
And of course, here we go, we've got the ship as well. Uh, and we just have these two bits of uh, question marks just to help the viewer see that the dragon's thinking. Then we've got the ship, that's the line art for the ship right there. And then we have the sailor on the ship and we've got all of his frames waving back and forth, pointing, hand going up and down as he points. And I'm gonna show you the quick and easy method to do this stuff. So let's just say, you, you, so you have, I've drawn my sailor here, right? And I'm really happy with this and he's, all he's gotta do is lean back now, right? So the next frame, I want him to be in the same position, just leaning back. All I do here is I would duplicate his layer. So that's the copy there. I'm gonna unlock it so I can now touch the line art. Great, you see how everything else is locked. I'm not touching any of that other line art behind him. I'm just touching the line art of the layer that is unlocked. So let's just say, I, I don't really need to change, I don't need to redraw the angle of his head right here. So I'm gonna press V, my select tool. I'm gonna to grab those lines. Now I'll grab his neck as well, sure. And then uh, I'm just gonna shift and use the arrow keys to be, oh, he's gonna be about that tall when he's standing. And then I can just kind of curve it that way. So he's gonna be standing up, yep, that's cool. These guys I don't really need. So I'm just gonna delete them. Come to think of it, this neck can kind of be a bit more straight. And this is what I love about Illustrator. It's like cheating, it's amazing. So, so doing this really quickly, let's just say he's kind of standing up now, upright. Oof, this is horrible, but it's an example. So, okay, he's a bit too tall. Let's put him about there-ish. And you can just resize, I'm just gonna grab this really quickly. I'm just gonna grab this and you know bring that back down, bring this like this, something like that-ish. Uh, then you can just draw these. Uh, and if I say, oh, you know what, I, I, I like that line, but it's a bit too thick or it's a bit too thin, just grab it, go to the P to here, I can make that thicker, or I can make it thinner, or I can make it really thin by going up and just manually typing in 0.1. And you get stuff like that. I usually, I usually make it quite thin, and then if I have time, I will go back over and I will just add that thickness using pressure. Stuff like that. But the, I know now that this frame and the frame before it, both the feet are gonna be in the exact same space. So it's just a matter of copying, duplicating, and then making your changes. So now that we have all of our line art done for the entire animation, uh, what you do is you turn off that white canvas. You don't need that anymore. And whenever we turn on our line art, this is literally just, uh, this is literally just a drawing with just line art here. Everything else out here, that's all alpha, That's there's nothing exists there. It's just line art that exists now. So because we're using the uh, Adobe Suite, all these programs can talk to one another. So I'm just gonna file, save as, navigate to my Rainwild Chronicles folder, and then just everything that's labeled down here, I'm going to label the same up here. So I always know which layer is which. So if I go part one, background. See right now I'm in the part one scene and then background and then I just I save them out like that whenever I just wanted to like save my progress and get some sleep I just say it was a checkpoint <laughs> but um pretty much what you see here these are all the names of these layers here it's everything should mirror up nicely so you save those out and then you can come here and if you click on them you can even get this cool little uh preview in windows of just uh whatever it is that you've saved there you'll see your line art I really like I, I I really like that. Uh, it made things easier. And if it's just the line art that I'm worrying about, so for example, right here, it's just the line art that's going on top of that crinkly paper at this part of the animation. You just go to uh, wherever you're putting your footage, like here, and simple matter of, of grabbing your saved line art files and just dragging and dropping in there, and they will just display nicely up here. You know, drag out here, drop. 
What I liked about this method is I could add further animation in Premiere if I wanted. What I mean by that is if you look at the ship's line art over here, that's, that's all the ship is. It's not really moving. But what you can do is you can bring it in here and add some transformations to it. So all that's happening here is if I go to the ship, which is this guy here, and I go to the effect controls, you can see this small animation that I've put on there where it's just transforming from uh, right to left and uh, pretty much put my animation points in and then that's uh, the interpolation is uh, it's just a it's a bezier kind of just easing in so it's slowing down nicely there like that yeah and I did the exact same thing for the sailor here he's just being animated in the same way that the boat is and you know that's that's a new element that's a new element new element so it's a, it's a bit tedious, but it really pays off because you get this really nice paper texture and I really like the art style. And you know, that that's literally all there is to it. If you just want to if you just want to achieve this really simple animation technique, draw your pictures, bring them in. If ever there is some animation that's happening on top of the background, just create those separate little elements, fill them in with some texture. In this case, that's the paper, and then you just animate them in uh, Premiere. And, you know, you might add some little animations of transformations and stuff, which can just add to it. You can do these little cross dissolves, which helps things. I'll show you some examples. So, so one example here is, um, so if you want to use some transformations where you're actually using motion blur, don't just uh, transform the element. Because uh, if you do that, you can't get motion blur. If you want to get motion blur, you go to the effects in Premiere. And you find the... Video effects, distort transformation tool. You drag and you drop that on top of the element that you want to transform with a motion blur. And then you need to use that effect to apply the transformations. It's the exact same as the, uh, the normal transformations, except when you use it with the transformation effect, you just make sure you put shutter angle up to about 90, 100, about that. And that is what's going to apply the motion blur. So when, so when he's just scooting across here, these are all, once again, these are all just their own elements here. But as he looks across here, I, I put in his eyebrows as a separate element for this one. And then I just added a little bit of a transform there. So, you know, you can add these little extra bits of animation in Premiere. And, and of course here, that's just the scale. So I brought in my line art of the house and the effect control is just the scale slowly going through that, which is kind of like a nice little dolly in. And then I have this cross dissolve of black video, which is kind of like a transition to night and then boom, next frame is him turning on a light. I know it's a fantasy kind of medieval thing, but it's just a bit of fun. So, and, and it's, that, it's that simple guys. If you want to do some simple animation, that's a simple technique to do it. And the great thing about this method is, you know, if you set everything up right, you just do your own little animations and their own little scenes and their own sequences. You can come to your final edit. You can do your filming and it's just a matter of going to whatever animation that you've done, selecting it, control C. and then just control V It's a simple matter of just overlaying it on top of your footage. And then you could either just, you know, put a cross dissolve as you're talking, have the animations introduced like that. It, it's just a great way to divvy up your animations. If you wanted to put them on top of some live action footage. So just a really quick and simple tutorial, guys. If you have any questions, just put them in the comments or send me a message. I'm happy to answer them. Hopefully I covered enough here, but if you want to make your own 2D animations using Illustrator, I love, I really like Illustrator for drawing. That's how you do it. I hope you found this interesting. You can give the final video a look on uh, Beck's channel. Uh, it's a great summary of Robin Hobb's books. And if you're looking to get into a new fantasy book series, yeah, I highly recommend it. Beck put a lot of effort into the script it's very concise and it's got some fun little 2D animations you can watch as well. So that's all for me from now. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.